Today we're going to take a look at all the components going in this $323 PC and more importantly, can it play those competitive multiplayer titles like Fortnite and CSGO and Dota 2 at 1080p? Let's find out. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. And first off, we have here an APU from AMD. This is the Ryzen 3 2200G. Four cores, four threads, comes with an included cooler, and it costs 95 bucks. Now, it's also got a graphics portion built in, which we're also going to be utilizing today. Now, a good thing about this uh, CPU and GPU hybrid is that if you wish to upgrade your graphics in the future, at least with this build, you'll have some headroom to just drop a graphics card in, something like a GTX 1060, and then you'll get much better graphical performance when you have the extra budget to afford it. So $95, pretty damn good value for money. Next up, we've got the motherboard to support this APU, and that is the Ryzen A320 Micro ATX motherboard. Comes in at $48. Now, the good thing about this motherboard, at least if you buy it from Newegg, is that it comes Ryzen 2000 ready. And so what this means is that they've updated the BIOS so you have no issues if you install this APU from the get-go. So if you do buy a motherboard like this, make sure it's Ryzen 2000 series ready. Otherwise, you could have some issues where your computer might not boot up at all because it might not have the BIOS update needed to do that. Next up, the biggest one of this build, the biggest pain, I guess, DDR4 memory. I've got here two four gig sticks of HyperX memory from Kingston. Now, you can use any two four gigabyte sticks and in fact, I do recommend it. The cheapest I can find two four gigabyte sticks is $80. So RAM has seemed to come down a little bit in price. It still is overpriced, of course, but we are able to, at least with this build, take a detour from the GPU prices on the crypto mining boom. So we don't have to worry about that with the APU. So we're really only paying a $30 premium with this DDR4 memory compared to historical prices, which doesn't make it too painful. But next up here, we've got a one terabyte hard drive from Seagate. You can use the Western digital version if you want to. They're around the same price, $45, lots of storage. Of course, if you've got a bit of extra money, may wish to step it up to an SSD. Now for the last two components, the case and power supply. I've picked out two real budget friendly, value orientated picks here. First up, the case from Rosewell, $25 will fit all these components in. And then next up, the power supply, 400 watt from EVGA. It's got actually a good amount of power available, especially for a four core build like this. And you've still got ample room extra if you want to add in a mid-range graphics card like a GTX 1060 in the future. But now that leaves us with a total of 323 US dollars. Believe that's delivered to your door as well. So you don't have to worry about any extra shipping costs. And also if you're in Australia, it will set you back 451 Australian dollars. So what are we waiting for? Let's build this thing. So we actually tried booting it up before and it doesn't have the latest BIOS. And so this is the problem you're gonna run into. So had to pull out the 2200G and insert a Ryzen 3 1200, which was a first series Ryzen CPU. And then we can insert the USB stick, update the BIOS, and then we should be good to go with this CPU. So that was what I was saying in the intro, really important to make sure if you buy this motherboard and you don't wanna do this, to make sure that your uh, Ryzen 3 series motherboard is Ryzen 2000 series ready, at least in the advert or printed on the box. So after you've got the APU installed, the next step is to, in this case, our XMP profiles didn't really do anything. It just loads up a 2133 profile. So you wanna change that to, I mean, you can try and go higher if you can, but a 2933 megahertz speed on the memory will be uh, really good for this uh, memory overclock because since the APU utilizes the actual DDR4 memory instead of having a dedicated graphics card, 
with its own VRAM on board. So uh, we can go into the timings and then we can drop them as well, these timings here. You can just copy my settings if you want to because this is really, as you saw before, it's really budget orientated memory and it, um, and so it needs the timings loosened and of course needs more voltage. And after we save and exit that, we should be good to go with the games. So there it all is, ladies and gentlemen, with this budget $323 PC, we could get up and play Fortnite at 60 FPS at 1080p with 100% screen scale too. Also went over to Dota 2 and CSGO, so if you're into playing those with your friends, you can definitely do that with this APU. Was getting over 100 FPS on both those titles, and it was a really good experience, one that I can enjoy. Now, two things to talk about before we get on out of here as well. This is a low-powered consuming build. So I was reading about 110 watts max from the wall. This is really good power consumption if you want to play games for a long time. And from what I read, apparently the average person, at least in Australia where I'm from, spends over five hours a day on the internet. So that could be some power savings over time. Here we've got the A320 as well. We're going to talk about this little motherboard here because it doesn't have a whole lot of room for upgrading. Yes, we can add in a better graphics card with this build, and we'll get much better FPS if you want to step up your settings in your games or even step it up to 1440p. However, there's only two DIMM slots on this motherboard. So you will have to, uh, if you want to upgrade your memory to 16 gigabytes, you'll either have to change to two eight gigabyte sticks or get a motherboard that has four DIMM slots, which I would recommend outlaying a few extra dollars if you could to get a B350 motherboard with those extra DIMM slots. However, one very important fact as you saw midway with this video, was that this needed a BIOS update. Because I bought this from an Australian retailer, they didn't say it was 2000 series ready. So you may have some big headaches on your hand if you buy this motherboard and it doesn't say it's 2000 series ready and you buy yourself a Ryzen 3 2000 series APU. Uh, of course, you can get around this. If you do come into this problem, AMD will send you out a, what they call a BIOS upgrade kit. However, I imagine if it's your first time building a PC, then a BIOS update itself could be a scary thing. However, there are a lot of tutorials out there, especially from the manufacturers of the motherboards themselves. They have their own tutorials on how you can update your BIOS. So nowadays with YouTube and video tutorials existing, it's not too much of a problem, but you may be out of gaming for a few days. And it especially sucks if you come into this problem and you're really dying to play games with your friends and you just bought this PC and you're like, okay, everything's here and I can't play it because of a BIOS update that is needed on this motherboard. But anyway, with that aside, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about this little gaming PC here. I mean, I think for the money, it's really hitting hard, especially if you just want to get into PC gaming 
play those titles that a lot of your friends are playing, those competitive multiplayer titles, and you don't really care too much about graphical settings. Of course, we've still got, as I said before, those options to upgrade the PC if you wish. You've got that there for the future when you get some more money, but this for 323 bucks, absolute bargain. And if you want better price performance than this, then you may have to sacrifice that new warranty on these parts and go with a used price performance build, which I do here on the channel quite regularly. So if you wanna see that, make sure you hit that sub button and click the notification bell and turn that on. And if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit that like button. Of course, you could just spend some more money, go with like a $700 build and you'd have better performance too, but that costs more money. Anyway, catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. 16 gigabytes, you'll either have to change to ooh, two, ooh, ooh. Also, RAM overclocking as well. It's super important. Also, overclocking your memory too. If you saw what I did mid-roll with the memory, you might wanna do the same. It does help with performance. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the super easy budget PC. So there it is, lady. But we are able to circumnavigate that GPU pricing fix